welcome back to the second lesson and in this one I'm going to be going through how to optimize the setup of QGIS so open it up and I'm using 2.4 the latest version is 2.6 um, but the setup not a lot has changed in terms of the layout of the um, application so first thing we'll go to preferences and you are confronted with quite a lot of different preferences here um, over various things. Um, the ones I'm going to be showing you to um, set up are the rendering, which is um, very important because it runs. And when you're using very large data sets and very complex maps, um, it can put quite a strain on your computer. So I tend to have this checkbox checked here, the render layers in parallel using many CPU cores. And depending on how many cores you've got, I'm running um, a quad core iMac. So I tend to use three of the cores and left, leave one behind for the other applications and system to run. Um, but whatever you've got, um, it's best to maximize it here. So if you've got an eight core machine, then use six or seven cores. Um, it basically allows QGIS to run a lot faster. Um, next one is the Canvas and Legend. And the two things here which are important are the selection color, which is the color that your map will highlight when you click on an element, whether it's a country or a river or an area that you've drawn yourself, this is the color it will highlight, so you can change that here to your preference. And the background color is the background of the page behind your map. Um, I tend to set this as the C color, simply so that when I'm exporting for print or web, I don't have to worry about creating a C color in the background. Um, map tools, um, the predefined scales here are very useful for setting up styles depending on what your zoom level is. So I tend to add in an extra one in between 100,000 and 250,000 um, because the step there is quite large. Um, it's quite good lower down, so but you can add in whatever steps you want here. Um, next one I'll go through is the CRS, um, which is basically to do with the projection of your um, map. Um, I always have it set to enable on the fly per reprojection by default. Because um, the data that we're gonna, I'm going to be running through with you is natural earth data and it uses the WGS84 projection, which isn't the nicest looking projection to be honest. Um, so I always set the enable on the fly reprojection, which then allows you to change your projection of your map um, without having to go into your project and check this button every single time. This just does it by default. Okay, so that's the preferences. Obviously, you can tweak at these to your heart's content and choose whatever setup works for you best. Um, as far as the actual setup of the application, um, what icons are on display and how you, um, what uh, panels you have on show is all done under the view and panels and toolbars. The panels basically refers to this area here. I only tend to have the um, layers one set up. You can have others if you want. Um, browser basically has um, shows you where your mach things are in your machine. Um, I don't really bother with that, to be fair, because it just adds more clutter here. And when I've got a map with a lot of layers on, I don't want any other things in this panel on the side. So I tend to keep this free just for layers. Uh, i controlled under the toolbars. Um, these are the ones that I tend to use by default. Vector, manage layers, file, digitizing and attributes. But you can choose whichever ones you want. I choose these ones to find them without having to look through 40 different icons. Okay, so that's it for using um, how to set up the QGIS file to the best. Um, I'm going to run through in the next lesson downloading the natural earth data, which in my opinion is the best free source of um, free GIS software, um, free GIS data. So come back to the next lesson and um, I'll see you then.